Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Inside Bronco Football. I'm Bob Beeler. Football is a game of ups and downs, momentum shifts one way or another, and not just in a game, but in a season as well. This past week proved to be a dip in the roller coaster ride as the Broncos stumbled on the road in a difficult to swallow 28-14 conference loss at Air Force. Here's our Tucano's Brazilian Grill menu for this week's show. We'll go one-on-one -on -one with Coach Harson to talk about what happened at Air Force and what some of the keys will be to bouncing back. It's Nevada week as we break down a much improved Wolfpack team as we preview Saturday's game. And we'll spotlight a couple of young Bronco up and comers at wide receiver and tight end. Seven turnovers and being held scoreless through three quarters were the culprits in last Saturday's loss. It dropped the Broncos to three and two on the year. Without question, one of the more frustrating games in recent years, but one the Broncos must analyze and then rebound from. It's the first part of our Coach Harson one-on-one -on -one conversation. We discuss the issues from last week and how the team must remedy those. I think the biggest thing that stands out is turnovers. You know, it really doesn't matter who you're playing. Uh, when you have that amount of turnovers in a game, it's going to be very difficult uh, just to overcome that. You're taking away possessions from the offense. You're giving possessions to their team. Um, was really proud of our guys on defense in particular, the way they fought, you know, to still keep us in that game, um, even the amount of turnovers we had. And then, uh, you know, there at the end, we got a chance to make a little bit of a run, uh, but just, you know, run out of time in that situation there. So uh, ultimately, there were some good individual performances in the game, but as a team uh, and overall, I mean, we can't have that many um, turnovers that's going to hurt our team that we did in that game in order to win the games we want to win going forward. It seems like it's such a random thing, turnovers. I mean, I don't know how you can coach either to get them or to not give them away. Is, yeah. is turnover something that just kind of comes up? Well, it's part of the game. I mean, I think that's what you always see in the game, and it really becomes the, the one stat that probably holds true in almost every game is who wins the turnover battle, and so many coaches talk about that, and there's a reason why. Um, you know, there are some plays in there, and there were some plays that Air Force made on the, on the defensive side that created the turnover. Um, and there's things, you know, where it comes to decision making, hanging on to the ball, little coaching points and things like that you talk about throughout the week, you know, that come up in a game that creates them, you know, from yourself. Fans love quarterback play and they watch Grant Hedrick, they watch Ryan Finley. Talk about what Ryan was able to do when he came in and maybe what you're looking for from Grant this week to bounce back. Well, I'll talk about Ryan in particular. You know, anytime you come into a situation like that, you know, it's difficult. You know, um, you're coming into trying to boost morale and try to create something, which is what he did. And so I was really happy with Ryan. You know, I thought uh, his demeanor, I thought his energy, his enthusiasm, uh, and even his execution were all good, you know, when he came in there. Um, and I think, you know, as he walked out of that game, we didn't win, but I think there were some positive things for him personally. He can walk out of there and go, you know what, I was prepared when I was asked to go in there and play. And that's what we ask our backup quarterbacks to do. Uh, as far as Grant goes into the game, go back and study the film. You know, why did it happen? You know, what was the decision? Was it design? And ultimately, you know, it always comes back to me and, and being an offensive guy as well, you always go back and look at design and how you're coaching guys up. And so I've got to do a better job on the offensive side. You know, our offensive staff, um, we've got to do a better job, you know, to help these guys and put them in better positions. Uh, and so that's really the key. You know, our guys go out there and they play hard and they do everything they can to go out there and win the game. We've got to help them out. We've got to do a better job of that. Um, and we've got to complement each other throughout this week leading into Nevada so those things don't happen going into this game. I know things didn't look good for a good percentage of the game, but team hung in there. I mean, this was a game that, you know, went right down pretty much to the last few minutes of the game. Yeah, they, we battled. You know, we battled in the game. We put ourselves in a position to have a chance to make a run there at the end. Um, but, you know, when you're on the road especially, you want to start fast. You want to come out and start the game off right. You want to get points on the board. And, uh, you know, we weren't able to do that. We had a turnover early in, in the drive. And, you know, fight our way through that. You can overcome some of those. You battle back. Um, but essentially when it comes down to, you know, the amount, that's where it becomes more difficult. Uh, but our kids fought and uh, they fought throughout the entire game. As Coach Harson talked about, freshman quarterback Ryan Finley stepped in and sparked things in the fourth quarter. Our Lithia Ford drive of the game was led by Finley. It's Boise State's first score. The six-play, 69-yard drive took just a minute and 33 seconds early in the fourth quarter. It started with a third and 15 conversion from Finley to tight end Jake Rowe. Finley also hit tight end Holden Huff on a 16-yard play and ended the drive with a two-yard scoring strike to Alec Danins to 
complete the tight end trifecta on that drive. Despite the unusually high number of offensive miscues, the Bronco defense kept the game within striking distance with five three and outs and two forced fumbles in the second half. Bo Martin checks in with our Nampa floors and interiors hit of the game. A third down open field stop. Got Pearson him. thought about it on third and nine, sacked by Bo Martin. That's the play that Boise's defense needed, Carter. They had to come up with a big play. But... As we head to our first break, our Inside Bronco football cameras captured the sights and sounds of pregame at the Air Force Academy. It's one of the most tradition-rich settings in college football. fans, it's game time at the Built Ford Tough Sales Event. And when it comes to trucks, stats don't lie. F-150 with EcoBoost has smash mouth power with efficiency. And with best-in-class payload, boom, F-150 hauls in the Hail Mary. And here's a stat, pal. F-Series has been America's truck for 37 straight years. And that's a dynasty, baby. Now get up to 9245 total value plus no charge five-year extended powertrain coverage on a new F-150 Super Crew 4x4. This is a famous Chicago Connection hot oven delivery truck. Every day it delivers hundreds of delicious Chicago Connection pizzas all over the valley. Hot, fresh from the oven pizzas with lots of delicious toppings served on a tummy pleasing crust and covered with heaps of real mozzarella cheese. Ask for our money saving weekly special when you call or dine in. Chicago Connection, it's how you want your pizza. I was on my way home after a long day of nanny when my car went from foot, dead as a doornail, right in front of someone's driveway. So I thought I'd look for help, and would you believe it? The guy answers like a shining beacon of light. Oh, sorry. I manage a Les Schwab here in town. I'd be happy to take a look. Within 10 minutes, I had a new battery cable and was whistling on my way home. He wouldn't take any money, but I think I'll bake him some cookies. I'm Hillary Plock, and that's my Les Schwab story. Les Schwab, doing the right thing since 1952. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot, man. Happy to help. There are all kinds of reasons to be glad you have AAA. Getting back on your way is just one of them. AAA. Keep life going. Do you think the Nevada Wolfpack and their fans in Reno are looking forward to Saturday's game against Boise State? Consider this, the game sold out early last week, just the program's seventh advanced sellout in the last 15 years. Nevada enters the game 3-1 on the season, picking up their first conference win this past week at San Jose State. The Wolfpack also own a 24-13 win over Washington State this season. Unlike previous years, Nevada has been doing it on defense, leading the Mountain West, allowing just 19 points a game 
and giving up just nine touchdowns in four games so far. Offensively, the Pack have been stingy with the ball, turning it over just twice all year, and are led by senior dual-threat quarterback Cody Fajardo, who ranks fourth in the Mountain West in total offense while leading all-conference QBs in rushing yardage. We sit down with Coach Harson again to discuss the difference in the Wolfpack this year and the rivalry aspect of the game. It's been a great rivalry game. It really has been, you know, in the years I've been a part of it. And we played them in other conferences, and here we are again with another opportunity to play them. Um, they're doing well. You know, they're playing well, and, and uh, I know they're excited about the Broncos coming into town for another great matchup. And these games have always been good. So uh, we expect nothing other than a great battle between two good teams um, that are fighting for a position to try to win a conference. To me, this Nevada team looks like they're better defensively than they've been in the last couple of years. Uh, I think the D-line is playing well in that. Anytime we talk about it with ourselves, if, our, if the D-line's playing well, usually the defense is playing well, bottom line. Uh, their D-line's playing well. Uh, their, their front seven's playing well. And then it looks like in the secondary as well, you know, they got some good players back there making plays. Um, they created some turnovers that way. So uh, overall, I think scheme, I think attitude, and I think, you know, guys in the right position. So you see an upgrade, you know, in, in what they had done last year to where they are now, and that's really what they're trying to do each and every week is get better, and they've shown that. They also have a veteran quarterback. I believe Fajardo was in his third year as a mm -hmm. starter. Uh, this is a quarterback that can do a lot of different things. Talk about what he does for them and what you see in their offense. Yeah, Cody's a good player. You know, he, he can run it and he can throw it. And, uh, you know, a guy that's got experience now, you, that's really starting to show up. And you're kind of seeing some of that savvy from a veteran quarterback uh, come out in these games. You know, whether he's hanging on to the ball for whatever reason, getting rid of it at certain times, and then also making the plays that are available. You know, so uh, from an offensive standpoint, you know, they've always ran the ball effectively. You know, they've had good quarterbacks, and, and this guy's no different. He's a good quarterback. Um, he's running the ball uh, in their offense effectively, along with their run game. He's also throwing it down the field well. So, uh, to me, you know, that's a guy that we obviously, you know, we need to go out there and be aware of and defend, you know, in all those areas on top of stopping their run game. So, you know, Nevada's a good football team. They're doing well on defense, playing well on special teams, and, and they've got a quarterback and an offense that's, that's – uh, you know, scoring some points and, and being consistent doing that. So I'm going to say there seem to be a lot of similarities. You got two quarterbacks that are both veteran that have uh, the ability to move, mm -hmm. which can give a give a problem. Nevada had problem problem with Grant last year. Mm -hmm. Some good running backs mm -hmm. that uh, pile up some yardage. Uh, this this looks like a pretty good matchup. Yeah, you look at it on paper. You're looking at you know a, a lot of similarities from that standpoint. Um, but we don't play on paper, you know. We play on Saturday night, and we got to to go in there. And I, and I think if you go back to it, what do we have to concentrate on? Turnovers, you know, um, making sure that we hang on to the football. You know, our defense continues to play well, um, and that we create some things on special teams. I mean, it's really the same formula each and every week. Last season, Boise State down Nevada 34 to 17, due in large part to a big game from Grant Hedrick. Hedrick entered the game after starter Joe Southwick broke his ankle on Boise State's first offensive play from scrimmage. Hedrick ran for 115 yards and two scores, while Jay Ajayi found the end zone three times while rushing for 222 yards. We look back at that game from a year ago with our St. Luke's game highlights. Fajardo to try to throw for it, and he's going to be sacked. Thrown down by Demarcus Lawrence. The top of Lawrence White. Fajardo is ahead. Demarcus Lawrence with a big time play. Fajardo runs right. Ajayi, touchdown, Boise State, 71 yards. And 
it off to Ajayi. Ajayi, big hole, 35, 40, 45, 50, 40, 30, 20, count it down, 10, 5, touchdown! Jay Ajayi, 71 yards, and all of a sudden the Broncos jump in front, 19 to 17. Go down, pressure coming. Ajayi goes down! DeMarcus Lawrence on top of him. Kyrie Marshall there as well. Hedrick makes the handoff, keeps the ball. 20, 15, 10, 5. Grant Hedrick into the end zone. 20-yard touchdown run, and the Broncos are ahead 26-17. Sixth sack of the night for the Broncos. More to come as we hear from Thomas Spurbeck, who had a breakout game at Air Force. Hopefully a sign of things to come for the sophomore wide receiver. You're watching Inside Bronco Football, presented by Ford. The best thing at Chuckarama is the carving station. As soon as I get there, that's where I'm going. Got the roast beef, the ham, the turkey. Oh yeah, the meat is juicy, cooked just right, tender, amazing. The ham, the outer edge, honey glazed, it's just perfect. With the roast beef, they have the sautéed mushrooms and onions, and you gotta have those. The turkey with cranberry sauce just tops it off. The choice mm. is yours at Chuckarama. I think milk should be part of everybody's diet, in particular with athletes, because it gives you the nutrition, the calcium, uh, it gives you the carbohydrates, it gives you the protein, all the things that you really need to sustain, you know, throughout a day. You know, it's something that you can get into your body really quickly. I think that's what it's all about. I mean, you're trying to get in, get your workout done, fuel your body, and get out and get on with the rest of your day. Uh, milk provides that to you. Do you ever ask yourself, is my business prepared for benefit changes due to health care reform? Is my business carrying enough liability insurance? Or has my personal insurance coverage kept pace with my life? At Morton & Company, we help Idaho business owners insure their greatest assets. For help answering these questions and more, call 321-9300. Morton & Company. Innovation. Integrity. Insurance. Call 321-9300. Morton & Company. Trusted since 1910. The Larry H. Miller dealerships are proud to sponsor the Bronco Nation of Boise State with thousands of vehicles to choose from, in person and online. Backed by one of the largest dealer groups in the nation, your local Larry H. Miller dealer is ready to help you score big. Because whether you're changing your oil or even your car, we're all about you. So gallop into one of our dealerships near you to see what a better auto experience is like when the focus is totally on you. Larry H. Miller dealerships, driven by you. This season at Subway Restaurants, we're gearing up for big wins from your Boise State Broncos. Celebrate every down at Subway with the Broncos Meal, featuring your favorite Subway sandwich, chips, and a limited edition 30-ounce Broncos Collector's Cup. This is a season you won't want to miss with the Broncos' new head coach and 15 returning starters. Join the Broncos Nation today at Subway and show off your Boise State pride with a one-of-a-kind Collector's Cup, but only at your local Subway restaurant. Subway, where winners eat. Welcome back to Inside Bronco Football. I'm Bob Beeler. Thomas Spurbeck is a name you may not be overly familiar with from the Bronco roster. At least that might have been the case prior to last Saturday. The sophomore from Carmichael, California had five career receptions prior to the Air Force game. He more than doubled that with a team-high six catches for 73 yards, including one amazing highlight reel grab. Our Ford Bronco spotlight shines on Spurbeck as he gives us his perspective on the game and his role in his own words. Finley throws the ball right side, caught it first down, Spurbeck and more. Flushed out of the pocket to the right side, throws the ball, it's caught by Spurbeck. Yeah, so like whenever the coaches talk about our first team going down, uh, the biggest thing they talk about is not having a drop off between the two spots. So I just try to fill in best I can and do, you know, all the tips that he gave me and that we practice all week. They blitz in the middle. Finley going long, left side, Spurbeck out there, got it over his shoulder, inside the 10, down to the 8. So it was a uh, double move on the corner and uh, I didn't think he threw it to me at first and I glimpsed over my shoulder and I barely saw it. So I kind of saw where it was going to go and I just put my hands over my other shoulder and it was right there. It was a good ball by Finley, I just 
didn't slow down there just enough. Broke down the film or Matt hasn't really, we don't know an update on him yet, but uh, I'll probably just prepare like I normally do. Like I'm gonna start and we'll see what happens. Fruitland High School, just an hour or so west of Boise, has provided Boise State with some tremendous in-state talent over the past couple of years. One such former Grizzly star is tight end Alec Danins. Our Hayden Holmes homegrown Bronco segment this week features Danins, who grew up in Fruitland and joined the Bronco program in 2013. After redshirting last year, Danins has moved into a key role on the tight end depth chart, where Saturday night he enjoyed the fruits of his labor with his first career touchdown reception. A Finley comes under center, fakes it to Jay. Finley bootlegs right side, throws tight end, touchdown. Alec Danins with the touchdown catch. I'd grown up uh, watching the Broncos and always a big fan when I was younger, always watching the games. And uh, it's an awesome feeling now being here and being part of this program. Um, so we got, we got the call in, uh, called my name, put me in there. And um, so I got down on the line and uh, came around the cross, uh, bluffed the defensive end, and uh, uh, the guy went for Finley, and Finley just dumped it off to me and we scored the touchdown. It was an awesome feeling. Uh, being able to catch my first touchdown, it's been a while, and uh, I don't know, I just, it was just wide open. It just felt like me and Finley were playing catch, and it was a good touchdown. We're down to our final timeout, and when we return, we'll take a trip around the Mountain West. As we head to break, here's some Bronco mojo for you to enjoy. Sports fans, it's game time at the Built Ford Tough Sales Event. And when it comes to trucks, stats don't lie. F-150 with EcoBoost has smash mouth power with efficiency. And with best-in-class payload, boom, F-150 hauls in the Hail Mary. And here's a stat, pal. F-Series has been America's truck for 37 straight years. And that's a dynasty, baby. Now get up to 9245 total value plus no charge five-year extended powertrain coverage on a new F-150 Super Crew 4x4. Anybody else think Coke seems to taste pretty great at McDonald's? Well, join the club. Is it because any size Coke is only a dollar? Or because fries and a Coke really hit the spot? Whatever it is, when any size Coca-Cola, soft drink, or sweet tea is just a buck, there's something for everyone to love at McDonald's. I was on my way home after a long day of nanny when my car went kaput, dead as a doornail, right in front of someone's driveway. So I thought I'd look for help, and would you believe it? The guy answers like a shining beacon of light. Oh, sorry. I manage a Les Schwab here in town. I'd be happy to take a look. Within 10 minutes, I had a new battery cable and was whistling on my way home. He wouldn't take any money, but I think I'll bake him some cookies. I'm Hillary Plock, and that's my Les Schwab story. Les Schwab, doing the right thing since 1952. Color Us Proud, Lithia Ford of Boise, an official sponsor of Boise State Athletics. Lithia, where Ford begins in Idaho. We've been serving Idaho for generations. 
offering fresh, quality foods at great prices and raising premium Northwest beef. Today, we're proud to announce that Double R Ranch 100% USDA Choice Beef is exclusively available at your local Albertsons. Just like our founders, Joe Albertson and Robert Rebholtz Sr., we truly believe in quality, tradition, and supporting our neighbors. Double R Ranch, exclusively available at Albertsons. It'll be an interesting week this week in the Mountain West with a great deal of scoreboard watching as we take our weekly trip around the Mountain West. 11 of 12 conference teams are in action, including a couple of what should be entertaining Friday night games. San Diego State travels to Fresno for a West Division showdown. That game could be seen on the CBS Sports Network. Utah State travels down the interstate for an out-of-conference game against 18th ranked BYU. That game is on ESPN Friday night. Saturday afternoon features four out-of-conference games as Colorado State Fresh off its big win at Boston College will host Tulsa from the American Conference. New Mexico will travel to UT San Antonio of Conference USA. Air Force hosts Navy in a game that will have the annual Commander-in-Chief Trophy implications. And in the second of the Conference USA Mountain West matchups, Rice makes the long road trip to Hawaii. Saturday's night games are conference games, with UNLV traveling to San Jose State, and the nightcap on the CBS Sports Network is Boise State and Nevada kicking off at 8.30 Mountain Time. That brings us to our Milk Victory Keys to Victory for this week's game in Reno. Turnovers have been the telling story for the Broncos. This game could be even bigger as Nevada has turned it over just twice all year, so protecting the ball for offensive efficiency is critical. With the teams focused on Jay Ajayi and Matt Miller, finding alternate weapons will help take the pressure off of those two, and the silver lining in last week's loss was several new names have stepped up. Defensively, the Bronco front seven must be active and sure tacklers against Cody Fajardo and the Wolfpack run game, which likes to chew up possessions and clock. Well, I see a great week of prep. You know, coming off a disappointing loss, you know what, hey, you know, we got to move on and, and really, truly move on and, and really enjoy the process, all right? Make sure that we have prepared ourselves the very best we can leading into this game and then go out there and just cut it loose on Saturday and go play our, our style, bottom line, and go play to win. And uh, if we can do those things, we'll put ourselves in a position to win the game. Nevada week. For Bronco and Wolfpack fans, it's always a big one, as this rivalry stretches all the way back to 1971 and spans four different conferences. Kickoff is 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, and it's at sold-out Mackey Stadium in Reno. It'll be a fun one. That's all the time we have this week. Join us again next week as we bring you more of Inside Bronco Football presented by Ford. Thanks for watching. I'm Bob Beeler.